Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art and culture, and this is Billboard Breakdown. So this week was a little bit weird. Not just because we started getting tracks from the weekend earlier than I expected, imagining next week to just be overloaded, but we got some big surprises all over the place, including a few artists that I have not thought about or talked about in years that, at the very least, promised to make things interesting. Note that I didn't precisely say good, although there really was some promise here across the board. This actually was a pretty damn good week out through the charts as a whole, but let's consider everything else and take, for instance, our top 10, which again, did didn't really move much for better or for worse. Black Beatles by Ray Shimmer and Gucci Mane is still at number one, and considering how strong the sales, streaming, YouTube, and skyrocketing airplay are, that's not going anywhere. And again, I don't really have a problem with it comfortably holding over closer by the Chainsmokers and Halsey at number two. They were all wavering at the top in airplay all week, they're selling about half of what Ray Shimmer is, and despite huge YouTube, streaming not exactly solid right now. Now this leaves Starboy by the weekend, and advantageous position at number three. The sales are good, streaming is still solid, but it needed to boost on airplay to get any higher and it really didn't get it. In other words, it'll take a miracle next week to have this unseat Black Beatles or even rise past closer, even with the album release behind it. And yeah, that kind of disappoints me. I want to see this go to number one. It's a damn great song. On the other hand, 24 Karat Magic by Bruno Mars did capitalize off the boost. With stronger sales, good airplay, a sizable pickup on streaming, rising up to number four, and that's really the best it could have possibly hope for. Unfortunately, then we got Juju on that beat by Zay and McCall and Zay Hilfiger rising up to number five, which somehow picked up even more streaming even as sales seemed to be finally sliding off. Granted, it also picked up courtesy of some other weaknesses on the charts. Side to Side by Ariana Grande and featuring Nicki Minaj slid down to number six thanks to streaming weakness despite some good sales and great airplay, and Heathens by 21 Pilots just collapsed across the board down to number seven. And it wasn't the only one either, as Let Me Love You by DJ Snake and Justin Bieber slid down to number 8 on airplay and a bit of streaming losses despite better than I expected sales. And the last two didn't really shift at all. Broccoli by Drum and Lil Yachty clung on to number 9 with okay streaming and sales, and yet it was enough to beat out Don't Wanna Know by Maroon 5 and Kendrick Lamar, which despite better sales and still gaining on airplay for some ungodly reason, its streaming is absolutely miserable. Let's hope it stays that way or just falls out of the top 10 altogether. Now this takes us to our losers and dropouts and man, we had a busy week here. Send My Love to Your New Lover by Adele. No Problem by Chance the Rapper, 2 Chains and Lil Wayne. Too Good by Drake and Rihanna. We Don't Talk Anymore by Charlie Puth and Selena Gomez. Wishing by DJ Drama, Chris Brown, Scheme and Lyquin. And It Don't Hurt Like It Used To by Billy Currington. All of these are gone. And the majority of these are pretty long running songs with a range of quality that's all across the board. It's almost enough to obscure that there weren't that many losers this week on the charts. Two from Country with a little more summertime by Jason Aldean at 64 and 80s Mercedes by Marin Morris down to 100 although there's a limit to how much I would call that a country song and then there's Gold by Kiara taking a justly deserved hit down to 41 let's hope that song is gone sooner rather than later I really can't stand it on the flip side though our gains and returning entries are all over the map let's start off with the latter category I've got no real attachment to Chantage by Shakira and Maluma coming back to 77 but to see Kill a Word by Eric Church and Rhiannon Giddens at 94 that's definitely a good Good thing. As for our gains, well, let me start by saying that I think it's a big positive that Water Under the Bridge by Adele is picking up traction to 80. And I'm not really complaining that hand clap by Fits in the Tantrums throws up to 63. It's a decent pop song, even if it's a very far stretch from what they've made in the past. And if the lyric video was enough for Niall Horn to rebound this town of Tart up to 29, that's good too. I like the song. Hell, I don't even mind that Mercy by Shawn Mendes are up to 35, or Love on the Brain by Rihanna went up to 34. But beyond that, I can't exactly say that I'm pleased that Bad and Bougie by Migos and Lil Uzi were picked up traction off its debut to 54, or that Bad Things by Machine Gun Kelly and Camilla Cabello went up to 28, and at this rate, it could eclipse the success of that fastball song they're interpolating that it had in the 90s. And no, not a net positive. Ugh, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. In the meantime, we had a lot of new arrivals this weekend. They're all over the map. So let's start off with number 99, Parachute by Chris Stapleton. So 
So apparently, we're going to start off on a really, really high note this week for once. And man, I couldn't be happier that this has finally crossed over to the Hot 100. Let's not mince words. Outside of Whiskey and You, which I've always had a preference for the Jason Eady cover, Parachute is the best song off of Traveler. Easily one of Chris Stapleton's catchiest and most melodically grounded songs across the board. And the track is so uniformly awesome that it's a little tough to describe. Fantastically well-balanced courtesy of Dave Cos production. Melodic shifts in the guitars hitting at precisely the right points that the Brothers Osborne would later take something similar on It Ain't My Fault in earlier this year, and also a great song. Chris Stapleton's wild delivery, perhaps a little overstated, but belying the complicated emotional dynamic in the lyrics. A message to an ex where if she says the word, he'll be there, but the frustration that comes through makes it very clear that he's trying to convince himself more than her. There were only a few points where she ever needed that support, and from the sounds of it, it's not now. In any case, this song was inches away from landing on my favorite songs of 2015. Just missing the top 50. That's how great it is. Terrific track. Let's hope mainstream country gets on board. But in the meantime, definitely check this out. It's fantastic. Number 98, Versace on the Floor by Bruno Mars. Somehow the great songs keep on coming. Easily the best song off of Bruno Mars' last album, 24 Karat Magic. It might be a shameless throwback to that era of slinky Michael Jackson R&B, especially with how the liquid synth groove matures and develops as the twinkling melody shifts slightly on the hook and the percussion builds some real tightness. But again, best kind of throwback. And with the perfectly balanced backing vocals and with a sax tone that you can't convince me didn't come from a synthesizer, although how it breaks into that bridge really does redeem it for me, especially with the synth cascades on the outro, plus the lyrics that play into sensual but never quite explicit. Yeah, sure, it's a throwback, but Bruno is at his absolute best, and the song kind of is sexy as hell. It's fantastic, and again, I really hope this sticks around. Damn great tune. Check it out. Number 97, Infinite by Eminem. Now I'm trying to repent from it, but when I hear the beat, I'm tempted to make another attempt at it. I'm infinite. So did you all know that it's been 20 years since Eminem released his first project? One that was barely heard, got pressed I think 500 times until he became a massive success, but was also that big project that got Dr. Dre to co-sign him? Makes you feel kind of old, doesn't it? Well, what gets kind of fascinating is that this was the point where Eminem, he was still a great rapper, but he was also coming into his own as an artist, defining a unique sound and voice and style, which meant going back to the title track of that first project now, it's a little bit surprising now it's been remixed and re-released. The incredibly well-layered multi-syllabic rhymes, they're definitely there, and the remastered production backing it is excellent with the blur of pianos and simmering synths against rough drums and bell tolls. But what's telling is how Eminem isn't nearly as angry or defined as a harsh spitter at this point. It makes for a really fascinating case of what might have been should he continued more on this reasoned, more even path. He probably wouldn't have been as popular. But as it is, it's another great song. Great production, very well-structured lyrics. The content is as solid as it really needs to be, and it's clear the seeds of greatness, they were there all along. Overall, again, bit of a throwback, but it's a stellar song, definitely worth your time if you hadn't heard it. Check it out. Number 91, Play That Song by Train. be the only one who's more than a little bit stunned that there's a new train song on the Hot 100, am I? Seriously, after Bulletproof Picasso had little to no impact in 2014, I was not expecting them to stick around, and for the most part, they didn't. They put out a Christmas album, okay, and then they released a record earlier this year called Train Does Led Zeppelin 2. It's exactly what you think it is. So to get a new song from Train, I had no expectations beyond maybe a good laugh, especially considering Pat Monahan's reputation for atrocious lyrics. Well, I was wrong here because this is beyond tame, even by Train standards. They want people to play their song as it makes Pat Monahan go 
all night long. Now besides all sorts of bad jokes that I could make here, I've always found songs tell about telling other people to play music to be a tad ridiculous. You're musicians, play the song yourselves as though it's that good. But then again, the musicianship is pretty sparse on this track as a whole. Mostly just this tiny acoustic loop, hints of piano, and what sounds like a tuba to match up that lower string section. I think the jury's still out whether or not the percussion is real, I personally don't think it is, but it sure as hell swamps out the rest of the mix, and that's probably not a good thing, considering how flat and thin so much of this production sounds already really does not help the hook. In other words, it's not as badly written as so many Train songs are, but it sure as hell is forgettable and really is kind of mediocre in that respect. Next, number 86, Slumber Party by Britney Spears featuring Tinashe. Apparently, my opinion that the newest Britney Spears album is pretty mediocre, apparently that's controversial. Go figure. That said, if Britney Spears was going to release another single after a previous one flopped, Slumber Party would have been close to the top of my list from that album. And bringing on some guest performance work from Tinashe on the remix, that had potential. So I had hopes this might actually be better than I expected. And yeah, it's alright. Although it's a little bit startling about when placed in contrast with Tinashe, how frail and weak Britney's voice is by now. And Tinashe she's not exactly a powerhouse. As for the rest of the song, well, the instrumentation's okay, with the sparse watery warbles and clicking beat, and the hook picks up a bit of textured percussion playing for this hazy reggae groove, but I can't be the only one who's kind of exasperated by all the stuttered syllables on the pre-chorus. It's always struck me as a very lazy songwriting way to fill up space, and this song, no exception. Ugh, <sighs> whatever. It's tolerable again for this sort of sex song, but again, if this is the best adjectives that I can use to describe Britney's last album, bit of an issue. Just saying. Number 79, That's What I Like by that's Bruno Mars. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. Search by the fire at night. Silk sheets and diamonds all white. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. <sighs> oh, look, they can't all be winners here. We got Versace on the floor, and as such, apparently, we gotta balance out a great song with only an okay one. Hence, we got this. And to be fair, it's not bad. It's actually pretty good. What with the thicker bay, the squonking low synth that get a little bit brighter against the snap on the hook, and the blatant luxury porn nature of the lyrics, it reminds me a lot of a T.I. song, Circa Paper Trail, especially when you throw in on those trap snares. And look, if you're nostalgic for a sound that's got some good bass and is circa around 2008, it's clear that Bruno Mars can play off this pretty well, I can see you liking this. But this is where the thinner production unfortunately does do Bruno Mars a bit of a disservice. Yeah, the bass lines are good, but he could have gone more over the top with more horns and opulence to really sell this, and yeah, he doesn't. Again, it's still a good song, it's decent, but like most of that last Bruno Mars album, it could have really been great, and that does kind of irk me a bit. Still, good song. Number 75, Red Bone by Childish Gambino. Okay, round two with Childish Gambino. I wasn't nearly as crazy as I wanted to be about me and your mama, but he had another single ready, so maybe this would click better, right? Well, okay. This didn't work when Frank Ocean did it for Nikes, and I don't like it here either in the vocals. Not only does Childish Gambino pitch his voice up a semitone for the majority of the song, it's also been electronically thinned out, and it does not sound good at all. And I have no idea why he did it. Otherwise, the G-Funk touches, the weedy synths, and the firm funk of the bass line, they work pretty damn well. Why not all play it down in his regular register to further anchor all that gravitas? Especially if the mix is gonna pile on more layers of lower piano and guitar anyway to build swell on the outro. And lyrically... Okay, on the surface it's a message to a girl that's left him behind for her to keep aware, but in reality it runs a little bit deeper, a message to light-skinned black people to stay woke and very much aware of the shifts in their society, even as they might be able to avoid some of those changes. Now, that's a potent idea, it's got some deeper kick to it, there's some real nuance in the lyrics, and hell, I dig a lot of the instrumentation, but man, that vocal filter just 
kills it for me. Otherwise, though, going into this Childish Gambino album in a couple days, I'm all the more intrigued by this, and I can see people liking this song, so if you like what you hear, check it out, I guess. Number 73, That's My Girl by Fifth Harmony. This song is not supposed to be in the Hot 100 right now. Okay, that's not fair, but come on. This would have been the week where songs from Glory Days by Little Mix would have impacted the charts, like Touch or Private Show, or even that song Oops they did with Charlie Puth. And instead we got a new Fifth Harmony track. I get that it's huge on YouTube, but still? And yeah, I get this might come across as more than a little bit better, but when you consider this is one of the better tracks and be competitive at best with Little Mix's lower tier songs, that's still a disappointment when there's quality just waiting across the pond for the right push in marketing it's just not there and it's not like they're not playing in the same ballpark here either that squonking directly paired up with the blocky beat that kicks up into a pretty solid blast of horns on the hook that's not that far removed from private show a much better song except there's way more auto-tune on the hook here they're dropping rhymes and there's a little actual harmonizing and yeah sure it's catchy it's definitely a better fifth harmony song it's not better than all my head flex but it's still okay but it's very telling how fifth harmony are directly referencing Destiny's Child in order to drop forward their swagger rather than developing some of their own. But again, not bad, and even though I would prefer Little Mix, I'm gonna give this a pass, so if you like the sound, check it out. Number 53, Love on the Weekend by John Mayer. Black only weekend, black only weekend, love on the weekend, love on the weekend, I'm coming up and I'm loving every minute of it. Okay, here's an honest question. Does anybody care anymore about John Mayer? I'm genuinely curious about that because outside of good chart performance for this comeback single, I haven't heard a lot of buzz, despite being his biggest single since working with Katy Perry on Who You Love in 2013 or Shadow Days back in 2012. He's certainly not as relevant as he was in the 2000s, churning out frustrating to awful white guy with acoustic guitar songs with sloppy writing and utterly limp vocals, not nearly taking advantage of his proven virtuoso guitar skills, which is always makes a lot of his material really disappointing. Okay. Yeah, if you can't tell, I got a bit of a reputation on my channel for my dislike of John Mayer. One that has persisted since I reviewed Paradise Valley three years ago. But it's not even so much dislike as it is disappointment. For as talented as he is on the guitar, and yeah, I'll actually admit that now, having delved into more of his live performances, he's got frustratingly limited vision as an artist, and his compositions and writing have never been as interesting as they could be. So I had to hope he'd at least bring a little bit more ambition to his awaited return, maybe go a little bit outside the box, nobody would expect anything else. And seriously, this is what you bring to the table? This sort of airy, blurry, acoustic folk with sparse electronic percussion, it might be more new to the mainstream, but if you've had your ear to the ground at all, you will have heard this sort of thing by now for years in the indie scene. And the war on drugs, or real estate, or casualties of cool, of Courtney Marie Andrews, or any number of alt country acts, this is not. Nope, this is a song about how John Mayer is going to make love with you on the weekend, and pretty much just on the weekend. And he hates her guts because he loves every moment of that connection. He can't extend it, apparently. So why not stay? Well, his clothes are dirty, his friends are worried, and is anybody else completely not buying any of this? I get capturing the romance of a momentary connection, but the storytelling in the exit comes across so abruptly that it's hard not to see it as a bit emotionally manipulative to the audience, with just enough of a lead to get this girl to yearn for him to come back again, even if he probably won't. And sure, that might seem a little bit harsh, but it's not helped by John Mayer underplaying everything, both in the lazy guitar work and the inert crooning in the delivery. Maybe it's just personal bias here, but there's there's nothing about this that feels sincere or honest to me, especially when he gives no good excuse why he'd be leaving in the first place. And yeah, the overall sound is pleasant enough. I don't mind this. But given that it never really kicks into real gear to drive that climax, I will not say I'm a fan of this song, and I'm more a little bit annoyed that it's John Mayer, of all people, who lands on the charts with this sound. Ugh, skip it. Number 48, I Feel It Coming by The Weeknd featuring Daft Punk.
It's a moment stepping out of the darkness for the weekend to end off Starboy, and man, it's a damn good song. I've already talked about this in the following track that I would have reviewed the album last week, so I'll endeavor to keep this pretty brief, but it's promising that the two songs that debuted this week, while not being False Alarm, which I hope will be coming back soon, they're at least strong tracks. And sure, I feel it coming is an overly bright Michael Jackson pastiche, especially with the vocal layering, the tight 80s funk, the percussion, bass, and guitar, and even the lyrics are very much about embracing love, looking forward, way more positive than you would expect from the weekend. And yet here, there's this subtle shift, resolving a lot of the melodies on major phrases right out of the four chords of pop instead of minor chords. And yeah, it doesn't exactly make for it as immediately distinct of a song in its composition, but the mid-tempo flow coupled with Daft Punk's vocoders make it remarkably distinctive and pretty damn good in its own right. So yeah, I like it. Great song. And finally, number 39, Party Monster by The Weeknd. Now I'm mixing up the drink. I just need a girl who gon' really understand. I just need a girl who gon' really understand. I'm good, I'm good, I'm great. Oh, it's been a while, now I'm mixing up the drink. I just need a girl who gon' really understand. I just need a girl who gon' really understand. And yet somehow, stepping right into the light, we dive right back into the darkness, where The Weeknd makes a point of re-establishing his return to the sloshed hedonistic darkness that's permeated his entire career. The harsher synths, the faded effects around the vocals, the darker, bass-heavy trap flavors of the beat that eventually mutate into pitch-shifted fragments dissolving around Lana Del Rey's breathy murmurs in the darkness. And lyrically, yeah, isn't far removed from The Weeknd's typical hedonism. We've heard it before, except now he's a little bit more paranoid. Now that he's got wealth to lose, he's waking up to ensure that he hasn't been jacked in the night by the anonymous girl that he hooked up with. Overall, I can see this doing well. It's a good song, but I do feel it runs a little bit long and really is missing the extra detail to really drive it home for me. Just saying, it's good, not great. But overall, this was another startlingly good week, to the point where it's very competitive for this top spot right now. And let's get the worst out of the way fast. Despite a good sound, I'm giving the worst to Love on the Weekend by John Mayer for so much blown potential and not nearly being as interesting or captivating as he thinks it is. But this honorable mention, okay, it was gonna be a toss up between Slumber Party and That's My Girl, but I'm giving it to play that song by Train, a song that doesn't have the very sparse redeeming elements that keep both those previous songs from mediocrity and this song really just is mediocre. As for the best, whew, I'm giving it to Parachute by Chris Stapleton, but man, Versace on the Floor by Bruno Mars and Infinite by Eminem, they sure made it close. It's probably gonna be a tie for honorable mention there. Maybe just Versace on the Floor, I really do love that song. But this is two weeks into the Billboard 2017 year, and we start off uncommonly strong, so let's hope it continues. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown on Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.